Okay, welcome back to Business Owners Speak. Today, I am super excited to have with us Sharon Kitroser from Team Cat and Mouse. Sharon, how are you today? I'm great. Good morning, everybody. Really happy to have you. And like we do with everybody, let's start with tell us a little bit about you and your business. Well, I'm based here in uh, South Florida, which is not a bad place to be. Uh, I spent the last 10 years in nonprofit uh, and in fundraising and management. And about halfway through the pandemic, had some ahas that led me to join with a nonprofit friend and to start Team Cat and Mouse. Uh, we are consultants fundraising consultants, but we take a slightly different look at things. We have seen a lot, a lot, a lot of consultants who are very big on strategy, putting together these big strategic plans. And half the reason I, I'm in front of a bookcase is that's where most strategic plans land. They do not, you know, here's the big ideas. But where we come in is the training tactics and tools needed to take that strategic plan off the shelf and turn it into an action plan with tactics, training, and tools. Amazing. And I, I want to hear more about that, but let's go back first. Tell us uh, kind of previous career leading up to the fundraising and how that fundraising led to what you're doing now. That is a crazy, it's so much of why we formed Team Cat and Mouse did come from my first career. I got a co out of college and fairly quickly got a job in the world of radio. Like most people who go for their broadcasting degrees, I wanted to um, be Barbara Walters. I wanted to be on air. I wanted to tell the story. First thing to remember, I wanted to tell the story. I wanted to tell people's stories. I wanted to not be a hard news reporter, but I wanted to tell stories. Fast forward someone or everyone mentioned that I had a New York accent and I was not going to be on air. The only job I got offered was at a radio station who offered me an on air job in which my mother replied, wow, you could be the first person in our family to get food stamps. <laughs> Shortly after that, I started to get a number of every time I went to interview for an on air job, they'd walk me to the sales department like, okay, I guess uh, I'm going to start my career in the sales department. Not too odd because I come from a family of salespeople, from my grandfather to my uncle to my dad. Different, mostly products, things you could hold in your hand. Um, I got the joy of moving into the area of selling air. If you remember the movie uh, with Billy Crystal, um, um, where he gave up his career, of mm -hmm. selling air to go rustle cows and, you know. City slickers. So, city slickers. I, <laughs> did this, I got it. I watched that. I was one of those air salespeople. Uh, I rose through the ranks at ABC and CBS and Disney and had a really great career uh, until, you know, while radio stations were being sold and moved and, and everything, I finally met after... God, 25 plus years in radio, um, they were paring down and took out the whole management staff. I was director of sales. I had never been fired. I actually asked them if they had called the wrong person in. Like I had never been fired. I had bosses above me fired. I said, oh, my next? No, we like you. Okay. So I had to decide what I wanted to be in my second incarnation. Could have gone to another radio station or a television station, or at this point, lots of high tech offerings. And I said, enough. I, I'm Got a five in front of my age, an early five. And I said, <laughs> it is time to do something better and different to use sales skills to change the world. Luckily, about that time, uh, uh, my partner in the business actually um, called me and said there was an opening at the American Red Cross for an executive director, which involved standing in front of a camera at big events. Hmm, I could do that. Um, fundraising. I could do that. Getting people to believe in a mission, back to the storytelling, I can do that. And I was that was my first job moving over to the side of, of using my sales skills to grow an organization. Um, what I learned is 
selling intangibles so similar to fundraising. You're telling a story instead of saying, this is how this air can help you build your business. This is how getting involved with this mission can grow your heart, can meet your goals to change the world. Um, plus I got the opportunity to write some of the wrongs I always saw on radio, which was lack of training. Our very first team cat and mouse blog was about the lack of training in radio and the lack of training in nonprofit. Both types take people, throw them against the wall, see who sticks people, do, young sellers, young um, fundraisers don't get the training they need. They bash full on into a wall and usually leave the industry on mm -hmm. both hands. And that's kind of where I came from, where I am. I have two kids. They're perfect. Fabulous husband. He's perfect. I'm not perfect. <laughs> but definitely a storyteller. I love it. Make my job definitely easy. Here. Well done. All right. So let's talk about Team Cat and Mouse. You and your partner walk us through your passion, your vision, um, and kind of the nuts and bolts of of how you help other companies and other people. I, as I said, I um, I learned so many lessons during COVID that I can't even believe I was lucky enough to learn um, in my last job. But then it was time to leave. Um, you know, the average fundraiser stays in a job 18 months. I'd been there four years. I was you know, if I had to give them any fault, I had worked so hard during those initial days of COVID creating, making, helping, supporting, because I that I was fried and no one noticed because they were all in their day to day, which is a big problem in nonprofits because everyone is working so hard that the management ends up losing sight of 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 who needs help. And I, you know, I resigned, you know, un unlike many employees. I was not shown the door. I put every account I had ever worked on, all the contact information, every proposal for every corporate partnership. I left on great terms. Uh, and then, of course, because my specialty is corporate fundraising, I started getting calls like crazy from big national organizations. And all I could think of was more of the same. This was just going to be more of the same. So I called up Amy and I said, I have an idea. The best way to build a business is find something that people need and want. Uh, and Team Cat and Mouse was born. Um, ben came to us when he read one of our blogs. Anyone out there, if you need a laugh, read our blogs. They're very personal, very funny. Okay, I think they're funny. And they are very helpful because each one has something that will better your fundraising skills. But we started the business. It's very good to start a business when one of the partners' whole background is new business development. Very true. So I am a big believer in there's two parts. You work in the business and at the business. Me, as the, as the kind of managing partner, I every day do something in the business and for the business. Because I know if the funnel goes empty, you know, because we do some project work, people come and go. Most of our clients, our very first client just signed his third contract. So we tend to keep our clients for a long time. But I have this internal new business person sense of when it's time to fill the funnel again. So what does our business do? We review we do, we start everything with a discovery session. We want to really do a deep dive on understand what you do, why you do it, how you do it, who your best prospects might be. What have you been doing in all the different ways of fundraising? Do you do a lot of events? To, do you do a lot of grants? Do you do individual fundraising? Do you do legacy fundraising? We go through everything to really understand where, because often you find a lot of, 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 organizations will do one kind of fundraising, like they'll do events. Okay, great. Let's say we have a mm, pandemic. How's that gala going to work for you? So we are really been talking a lot about diversifying. So you can't get caught in any circumstance. You know, I know walks that have been canceled for hurricanes and tornadoes and sure. on, on and on and on. It's not just a pandemic. So we after that, we put together a plan that includes who needs to be trained up in what, to be the very best in what. We believe in teams, so everyone doesn't have to be very best at everything, but you want in each type of fundraising, someone who's very good. 
Then we put the tactics. How are we going to do outreach? When are we going to do outreach? Who are we going to out, you know, reach out to? What times of year? Such. And then the tools. I have to tell you, this has been one of our best offerings to close the circle. We work with very large nonprofits, national nonprofits, international nonprofits, and we also work with some, some small ones. I'll tell you a story. We did a, a training for the New York Food Bank, uh, City Harvest, and they wanted us to train their food pantries. So this is a lot of ladies in the basements of churches or in their neighborhoods, taking the food from the food bank and giving it to the, to the people sure. who they serve. And we, they wanted us to do a training for Giving Tuesday. And she said, don't talk over them. Our last consultant talked so over them that no one did anything because they were overwhelmed. Right. So we trained them. We told them what to do. Here are the tactics. Do this, this, this. And then I put together generic proposals for them to go to the pizza parlor down the street because they're not going to get corporate business for the, you know, food bank in Queens. They're going to get the little pizza guy who goes every pizza on Giving Tuesday, a dollar goes back to the food pantry. Yeah. And she called the next day and said, can I write an endorsement for your website? You'll see her on there. Because she said you were able to meet them at the level they needed to be met at. And all I did was a proposal with white space. Put your logo here. Take it to the pizza place. Right. So that's so, what No, go ahead. Sorry. No, that's what we do. <laughs> All right. So everyone that comes to you has a different goal, mission, objective, right? And um, let's be honest, a different skill set and experience with being able to um, raise the kind of funds they want. So what do you do with someone that, you know, has the heart for it, but has no idea kind of where to start and how to do it or is lacking in... Um, you know, really being able to produce some of the fundraising um, dollars that they really want? Such a good question, because there are differing levels. Sometimes it's easiest. Those people are the easiest because yeah. they're not going to have bad habits. Right, right, right. Um, I There are a couple of types that are, are great uh, for hiring. Ones, I love hiring athletes. They understand prep. They understand working. They understand what needs to be, you know, what prep needs to be done. I love hiring salespeople. You just need to readjust the way that some of the words they use, but they understand the funnel. They understand, you know, the basic things, I, you know, that need to be done, sales math or fundraiser math. They understand all that. You just need to often slow their roll and um, change some of the words they use and give a perspective mm -hmm. to them. They understand the root situation. Then you hire people that are nice or somebody's cousin. And sometimes you have to, um, you know, do your best. Everyone's not going to be an A player. Very true. And you know, I tell a story of a fundraiser that worked for me that was fantastic human being. She's adorable, lovely, great. They raised her from an assistant. And uh, she made the mistake of writing to the CDO who wrote, I was development director, what do you have on tap this week? Reasonable question. She writes back nothing. And I write, now you have lunch with me today. <laughs> you know? And I said, OK, here's what we're going to do. And I'm still friends with this like, young lady. She's terrific. She um, uh, I said to her, every day you have to make 10 new calls. I gave her no context. I gave her nothing. And every day she made 10 new calls. Right. The next Monday she calls me and she says, I have a problem. Yeah, what's that? She said, I have to I can't make 10 calls a day because I have too many appointments. Yay. <laughs> Perfect. And then I said, okay, let me explain this to you. You made 50 calls this week. How many turned into appointments? There's your closing ratio. Yep. Yep. And then, I think, you know, all sometimes you have to take people like that and put them on a program that as, oh God, as one of my old sellers 
he once said to me, if you, if you tell me what to do, even a blind squirrel can find the nut. Yeah. I took that, you know, he's a great guy. He was not a naturally born salesperson. Um, so sometimes you have to take those people and give them, uh, you know, measure activity to commit measure success. Sure. So what does an ideal client look like for you guys? An ideal client for us has a long-term plan to grow their people. Um, and we will build a program, especially there is no stock offerings at Team Cat and Mouse. We also work as a collective. So if you need marketing help, we work with, that's the good thing of coming from the marketing advertising world. I can pull in people as needed. Uh, we have a world-class creative director we call in when needed, did a beautiful piece for one of our clients, a marketing presentation. You know, um, people who are ready to take the next step, um, which could be from the ground to the first floor or could be from the fifth floor to, you know, the roof. With that said, um, Ben is um, works with us on grants. So the other perfect piece of business is people who also are in search of support for the grants program. He research and uh, researches and writes grants. He's also um, has the perfect personality for that because he's calm and methodical. Um, and even occasionally, since I brag about the one giant grant I got, will tell me, no, that is just too complicated. No, <laughs> you know, so he has the ability to, we built the business on everybody being very best. He will, you know, we work you know, a Amy is very best at planned giving an individual and I'm best at sponsorships and mm -hmm. corporate and he's very best at grants and of course as crossover, but we try to stay complimentary to each other. So for those that have not been on the website, can you explain the name? Team Cat and Mouse, you could be on the website all, you'll never discover the name. We were <laughs> coming up with all these names and um, Amy's husband's nickname was Mouse and mine was Cat, Kit Roser, and hence Cat and Mouse. Um, very few people have figured it out mm -hmm. uh, because everyone thinks it's about the chase. Right. That's a good one, too, but right. it's not. <laughs> and the team <laughs> came from Ben. The team is Ben and all the other people we put together because I'm very big on the collective oh. model. When everyone says they're very best at everything, someone is lying. <laughs> very true. And they're not going to surround themselves with people that are smarter than them, which is the only way to really grow. So um, only way. Yeah. So what's next? You know, what's the future look like? You, you know, you've kind of entered your um, second, potentially third career. Um, you seem very passionate about it. I'm sure Amy and Ben are as well. What's uh, what's the future look like for you guys? Um, the future looks like um, continuing to grow the clients and add to them. I think, you know, we'll probably need to add to staff because demand, you know, to be perfectly honest, our SEO has clicked in. And yeah. so we're getting calls. I mean, we just um, have had the joy of, of picking up a client in Guatemala wow. for America fundraising. I'm not fundraising in Guatemala. I'm not qualified, you know, but you know, we're the, uh, the website makes you so much bigger. Um, our other goal is to continue to offer people and our community, the access, you know, we do a lot of training for nonprofits first. We love working with them because as you know, uh, high water floats all boats, you know, the economy is crazy. You never know what's around the corner. If you can pivot and you can have, uh, you know, I had no problem when we lost our events. We took some online and we created a, a whole forum on healthcare disparities. Like have the ability to stop down and say, okay, wow. this is not going to work. What what will work? And the the, wow. the understanding of all the different kinds of fundraising that you can grow. So what's next for us? More clients, more opportunities, more friends of Team Cat and Mouse and quieter dogs in case you can't hear them barking. <laughs> They're good. All right. So um, how about a little advice? What uh, someone's gotten good at their career, they're thinking about taking the leap. Maybe they've taken the leap and they're struggling. What's some advice you'd give to, to new business owners? 
new business owners, this is the most, the best advice I have because I give it to myself every morning. Don't get on the roller coaster. Some days will be good. Some days will be really good. Some days will challenge you down to your soul. And just, you know, I always said you can ride a roller coaster. This comes from my years at Disney. You can ride the roller coaster like this. Or you can ride the roller coaster like this. I work my whole life to ride the roller coaster like this, to embrace the ups, learn the lessons from the downs. Um, and, you know, my husband has his own business too for 25 years. And, uh, you know, that was the lesson I learned from that. You know, the lesson I learn every day, one last Sharon story. Last August, I thought our business was going away. Who knew everyone in nonprofit goes out of town in August? In case anyone asks, August is a very quiet month in the nonprofit world. September, we were so busy, it was like flying asteroids. So that's the other thing too. Learn your, if there are cycles, learn your cycle. This August, helping my son move. I, I know it's going to be quiet, right. which means it won't be quiet. But, um, you know. <laughs> that's right. But you'll be prepared because you know those ups and downs are coming. Right. Ride the roller coaster. Hands up. Well, Sharon Kit Roser, thank you so much for taking the time today. Team Cat and Mouse, um, obviously on an exciting journey, and we appreciate you sharing it with us. Thanks so much. You bet.